Tiffany Haddish has just responded to the shocking allegations made by John and Jane Doe, who accused her and Avery Spears of grooming them when they were seven and 14 years old. On Monday morning, Haddish would post via Instagram and say, I know people have a bunch of questions. I get it, I'm right there with you. Unfortunately, because there's an ongoing legal case, there's very little that I can say right now. But clearly, while this sketch was intended to be comedic, it wasn't funny at all. And I deeply regret having agreed to act in it. I really look forward to being able to share a lot more about the situation as soon as I can. According to Yahoo Entertainment, back in 2013, Jane Doe alleged that Spears and Haddish persuaded her to mimic fellatio for a skit. In 2014, John Doe was allegedly stripped down to his underwear to film another skit. We've yet to hear from directly from Ray Spears on this issue as the lawsuit continues. Today, we have our Comedy Hype analyst, Capone and Pierre, calling in along with special guests and our in-house writer, Ashley White, to give their thoughts and reactions. Now, Pierre, I'm going to go ahead and dive into this tough, tough conversation. It's, it's, it's been everywhere, but, you know, of course, we're going to dive into it. I want to get your initial reaction when you first heard this headline. Well, heard it and saw it. Um, first of all, um, it just wasn't a well, well thought out skit, you know, for a PSA. One thing about pedophiles that we know, you know, those are kind of the lowest rung of people. Even when they go to jail, pedophiles either get killed or get really injured. We want the worst for a pedophile. And at the end of the, the skit, he didn't have the worst. He wound flipping the boy doing it to him. And that that could turn, you know, that turned a lot of people off. You know, but you want his most if you if you'd have killed the pedophile or shot him or put him in jail, we saw him in jail, we probably would have felt better about the skit, at least seeing it. Okay. You know, it was a choice. Now, Ari Spears is on the you know, a lot of people don't like his villain persona, so they're jumping on him for that. You know, a lot of people don't like him, you know what I'm saying, because of his persona, what he goes for. But I don't know. Um, I just think Tiffany had just jumped into something. It was young in her career, you know, before she's where she is now or for her fame really hit. Young comics, we do stuff like that. We jump into stuff, we try to do it. We don't think of everything. We just start helping each other out or try to be funny or be into something. And it was just something that wasn't really cool. I know both of them. The furthest thing they want to do is scar or hurt a child. I know Tiffany mm. and I know uh, Aries. You know, that wasn't their attention at all. But um, I, my biggest concern also is where was the parent? You know what I'm saying? The parent could be on the set 24-7 and see everything. To say they were coerced and stuff, you you can see your children in underwear in front of a grown man. If, you know, you should be on the set and say, nah, I ain't doing that. My kid ain't doing that at all. You don't let the kid do that. And then later on say, oh, man, that was I was tricked into it or whatever. You saw it. You should have been there at every step of the way. So... I just think it's a lot of blame to go around. Um, it was just the ill, ill skit that just didn't come off the way they wanted to, you know. And that was at the end of the right. day, I don't think there's any intention to be any harm at all to the children. Right. Yeah, and we'll we'll definitely dive into it. I just want to make sure we start with everyone's reactions. Capone, I want to come to you. What was your initial reaction when you first heard the headline? Uh, when I saw it, I was kind of thrown off a lot. Uh, I didn't know if it was supposed to be funny or if it was a PSA. Um, I strongly, strongly, strongly feel that people should be careful who they leave their they kids with, you know, relatives, all kinds of friends. And uh, it, it's, it's been going on for years. And uh, I wish it would have came across as a PSA and, and not tried to be funny with it. And I think it would have helped their case a lot. Uh, I only think that the funny part that they were trying to do when he, he had the newspaper and his eyes was coming through the newspaper, I'm not going to lie, I giggled a little bit, but I didn't expect the uh, the draws and all of that to be shown the way it was shown. And um, to give them benefit of the doubt, I just hope that it was a strong PSA to let people know that you shouldn't just leave your kids with anybody. I Because I, 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 I was always against that. Absolutely. Now, Ashley, first and foremost, thank you for joining us, not only as an in-house writer, but also as a new mother. So I know this conversation, you know, can be near and dear, especially when you have kids. So I want to ask you, what was your initial reaction when you first heard the headline? My initial reaction was disgust. I, I couldn't even finish reading the article that I first read it from. Um, and then watching the skit, like I, I literally couldn't pick my job off the floor. Uh, I just found it totally disgusting that I didn't find it funny at all. Um, I didn't get a sense of trying to bring awareness. It, it was just gross to me. Absolutely. Now, Ashley, as I mentioned, I know you're a new mother and a new parent, of course. You know, 
in this situation, it can be tough as a parent, right? To, to reflect and we'll go into, cause I know Pierre brought up, you know, where was the parent at the time? But I wanna start with you, Ashley. You know, as a parent, how would you respond if these were your children? Uh, personally, I'm taking the, you know, full course of, of legal action, you know, uh, Right now, as as we're recording this, my child is is in there with my mom. But you know, not everyone has a mom or has uh, the child's father or has help. You know what I mean? So um, I I think well, all of us as kids, we've been left with babysitters and X Y Z. The only person that you really have control over is you, and um, it's it's something to be said when you trust somebody. You know, you, you think you know somebody, you trust them. Um, personally, I just feel that it could happen to anybody who has kids. Now, Pierre, let me come to you because I know you said, you know, where was the parent when all this was being filmed? Um, but I kind of want to, you know, put, put the shoe on your foot for a moment. As a parent, if these were your children that have had that experience, how would you respond to it? They wouldn't have that experience. That's it. They wouldn't have experience. So I'm not going to let somebody watch my kid, let somebody take my kid and be, you know, I, I have no idea what the sixth screen scene is. I don't know what they're doing over in the other room. I don't know if I'm a pedophile. I'm like, I don't hear my child. I trust you. Do what you want to. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You, you either go there with your child and find out what the skit's about, unless they sit there lying to you and then they, 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 they talk to you in a corner while they're doing it. That, that, that didn't happen. That mama knew what it was. And, you know, they know what it was. At the end of the day, it's now turned into, remember, this is the, Two, this is 10 years ago. Times were different with those sketches and so forth. There's stuff that we can't do now that we could do back in them. That cancer culture is there now. A lot of younger people are now online feeling a certain way. I don't like that. I don't like that. I remember Eddie Murphy, when he did the lyrics, he used the F-bomb and stuff. Remember that? He used the F-bomb too. And we, it's one of the greatest specials of all. Could Eddie Murphy do that special today? These kids nowadays are like, man, that's disgusting. That's wrong that he's using the F-bomb. Okay, now it is. But 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it wasn't. You know, Times move mm. on. So... I, you know, I'm not saying this right. I tell you, it, it was a PSA. It, it, it fell flat. It wasn't, it didn't work. At the end of the day, the, 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 the pedophile shouldn't have been victorious with the boy putting oil on him. That, that was, you can't have that. So right. at any time. Capone, let me bring that same question to you. As a parent, how do you respond, you know, to a situation like this, if these were your children? Um, I have to agree with Pierre. My kid wouldn't be in that situation. Uh, I never spoke about this before, but... Uh, my cousin, female, molested me when I was 11. Mm. And uh, I, at the time, I didn't see nothing wrong with it. I never talked about it. I just <laughs> made me feel like I got some uh, head at a young age. But when I look at it, you know, now, and even through years past, you know, it was disgusting. It's it's, it's very bad situation, you know, boys, or girls getting put in that by family members and think that everything is all right. Even though she was a teenager, you know, I was, I was 10. I didn't know no better, but <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because at the time, as I reflect on it, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. I just thought I was getting an experience, but I was really being taken advantage of. And uh, you just have to be careful, you know, very much careful as a parent. And as the, you know, as Ashley said, you know, she's with, her child is with her mother and, and not everybody has has a mother, and, you know, but my mother was young and she wanted to do things. And sometimes they just leave you with people and go have a good time and think that everything is all right. Most cases, everything was all right, but there was a case where it wasn't. Absolutely. And I definitely appreciate you for even being open and vulnerable. I do think, you know, there's not enough emphasis put on when situations happen, uh, happen to young men like that. You know, it's always, we're always talking about the women and things like that, but it does happen to men um, and young boys. So thank you so much for even being able to, to open up and share that. Um, I know that I provide a lot of healing for people. Um, now, of course, in this case as well, there's a, a lot of dynamics and a lot of layers to it. So I want to dive into the case a little bit. And talk about a little bit about what exactly they're being sued for. Now, as I mentioned, they're going by John and Jane Doe. So Jane Doe accuses the entertainers of pressuring her to mimic fellatio for a video in 2013. Um, the lawsuit also contends that John Doe was coerced to appear in sexually suggestive video in underwear, and that in 2014, the film featured both Haddish and Spears. Now, to your point, Pierre, it's also been alleged that the comedians did lie to the parents 
and said that they were creating this skit for a sizzle reel for Nickelodeon. So it kind of changed that dynamic of exactly what it would feel and look like. Um, and again, that's only allegedly there are no facts that have been brought to the forefront just yet. Um, and of course, people are reacting to this, some even bringing up the fact that Hollywood has tackled this conversation before in films using minors. Um, so that brings up the question, and Pierre, I'll come to you for it. You know, do you think that the violation is that they joked about the subject matter or that they involved minors? Of course, one that was was in his underwear. Um, there's a lot you just said. Um, again, yeah, it's, it's all, all, all that, all that coerced and all that junk. You know, if you're with your kids, man, just be with your kids. You can see it. Your eyeballs can see your kid rolling around playing with toys and the underwear. You're on the set. You're looking at it. You're looking at it. There's no coercing unless you're in another room doing other things and not being a proper parent to your child that you care so much for now. Okay, you should care for it that much back then. So if you're not watching what's happening and watching every moment, like, no, my kid ain't gonna wear that. No, my kid ain't gonna have the ass in the air. Say that, you're the parent, you have the control, you know, then, but whatever, whatever, you know, you wanna just, she didn't know any better. Um, um, as Hollywood has tackled that before, sure they have. I, I think it was a movie, I'm not sure exactly everything, but was it Megan Good or the or, 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 or Jesse Mollett's sister, Ease by you, one of the movies where Sam Jackson might kiss the little mind, or kiss the young girl in the movie, mm -hmm. you know? So we've pushed that envelope before. These are comedians, the comedians have pushed the envelope the entertainers have. No different than Shane Ch O'Connor, what she did, um, 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 Kathy Griffin. We all, as entertainers, we push the envelope and sometimes it doesn't work. It backfires, like it backfired in the situation right here. We have to be more cognizant, especially today, we gotta be more cognizant than we were 10 years ago about what we do because people wanna cancel you quickly because they didn't come up during those times, so. Ashley, let me come to you. Like I said, there's a, a lot of layers and I know there's a lot of information as Pierre mentioned that I'm, that I'm putting in front, but I just wanna make sure we have the facts in front of us. So I wanna ask you, and of course, if you need some more information, Ashley, just let me know and I can bring it back up. But when it comes to the actual violation, of course we have the lawsuit, but then we also have the public, of course, that's given their opinion as well. Do you think the violation is that they joked about the subject matter or that they involved minors, even though we've seen it done in Hollywood movies and you know shows and things like that actually i just want to say um you know the fact that all this stuff is played out before we've seen it before back then and nobody bad and die back then that doesn't really make it okay now it wasn't okay then it's just that you don't know what you don't know you grow you learn new things so you know going back and watching some of the stuff that i used to think was okay i'm just like okay that makes me feel weird now you know um, so going back to your question of whether it was the act or the fact that they're joking about pedophilia, I, you know, I, I would never find a joke about pedophilia funny, you know, we, mm -hmm. like you said, seen those jokes before and it's just always, it's kind of like, what was this, you know, I, I don't know. And it, it really just adds fuel to the fire. It makes it worse. It's like a slap in the face to see a, a young child like that, you know, like Pierre said, the, the parent wasn't there. And that's unfortunate. Um, I just feel, you know, as a parent, you don't know what you don't know. I wonder if you all, I don't know how old your kids are, but did you think the same? Did you move and operate the same that you did, you know, such and such years back? Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I don't think jokes about pedophilia are funny. I don't think there's a place for them at all. Capone, let me let me bring you into the same question. You know, breaking down the case, and of course, people bringing up, "Hey, Hollywood has tackled this before. Hollywood has put minors in movies before to talk about pedophilia." Let me ask you: Do you think that the violation is that they joked about the subject matter, or is it their involvement with minors, and of course, the young boy being in underwear? Um, I, I don't see the joke. I don't see the joke. I didn't see the joke. Um, I, like I said, I'm trying to give a benefit of the doubt from what my witness, um, they was trying to do a PSA and, uh, the parents sh should have been there. Um, uh, if there was a Nickelodeon thing, there would have been a contract from Nickelodeon to sign, uh, what they were doing or whether it was a Nickelodeon event or whatever. Uh, none of that probably was taking place. Um, there's a lot of different angles that you got to look at this. Like I'm a father and I'm a very, very stern father, especially when it comes to my daughters. My daughter 
was 17 years old and I, you know, I didn't live with her mother, but her mother found it all right for her to have company and, and boys spend the night at the house. That ain't my policy. And sometimes you got these parents that's a little more lenient, you know, until things happen. And my daughter wound up being pregnant at 17. And uh, how did this happen? Oh, uh, you let the dude spend the night. You, what do you expect them to happen? And so, you know, when you, you look at the consequences of some actions of children or as a minor of what is, um, you know, being done to this child, the parents should have took full responsibility of just saying no. And I'm quite sure that they were there while it was being filmed. Nobody just throws their kid in the film and just not be there and see the progress. We know the parents were there and they allowed it to happen, just like Pierre said. Mm. Now, Capone, you bring up the PSA. Let's let's dive into that a little bit because they did place a PSA at the end of the skit that says, watch who you leave your kids with. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt and let's say that their intention was to solely bring awareness, of course, with a comedic spin, but to bring awareness. Does that change anything for you? You know, when you go back and watch, if you go back and watch the skit, you know, does I mean, that change reality, anything or make it reality, easier for you to digest? Reality is there. You know, I, I, I've, I've, as a comedian, you kind of study people. And I've heard so many stories, so many stories of women being molested by their uncle, by their father, by their brothers, and they couldn't say nothing. I mean, most of the cases that I've heard, I, and I've sat there with these women and talked to them because I wanted to know. And, and, and it's a lot. When I say it's a lot, it's a lot. And I've questioned it, hey, um, you know, you've been touched and you can see the reaction right away. I, why you didn't tell your mother? Well, my mother didn't believe me and you know, whatever the case is. And so for me to see them and, and say watch who you, you leave your kids it, with, like I said, it was a very touching, uh, um, you know, uh, film, but at right. the same time, it was uh, something that I think should have been put out there, but just a little bit more I don't know how to say more tasteful of, of, <laughs> yeah, giving, of, of giving the um, the PSA. Pierre, let me let me bring it to you and let's talk about that PSA. If that PSA was at the beginning, do you think that would change, you know, the way that you viewed it or make it easier to digest? Well, I'm an artist and I realize that art imitates life. It is what it, it is. We, we're artists. We, 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 even on stage, we talk about stuff that happened in life. Now, are we saying that you can't do anything with children, any kind of thing with children, bullying, anything with children? Well, I think he was trying to do a PSA about molestation. Did it go off right? No, it didn't, it didn't work. He tried, he tried to make it funny. It wasn't funny. It didn't hit, you know, the end. You cannot have the, like I said, the, the predator winning at the end. But it's great director like Mel Brooks. He did a whole movie about the Holocaust, made a jokes about the Holocaust and stuff. So artists sometimes try to be funny. If we try and it doesn't work out, this one didn't work out. So if we saying, hey man, you can never do a joke about kids and you're gonna stagnate my art, you know, so I saying, we ain't doing nothing about kids ever, no kind of thing. Really? I just feel like it was done in poor taste. It didn't work out right. I know the, 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 the he was trying to do a PSA, but it didn't end out right. It didn't work right. And sometimes it fails. Sometimes we do stuff and it fails. You know, are we horrible people because it failed? No. This is an artist trying something. I don't think Tiffany's a horrible person. I don't think the mother intentionally tried to have her child, child be harmed. I don't think Ari Spears tried anything to harm their children. It just fell flat. It didn't work because it didn't feel like a PSA at the end of the day. You can't have a pred the, the predator winning at the end of the day. Where's the solution at that? Absolutely. Great point. Ashley, I want to bring you in because I know for you, this is like, you know, nothing's funny. I don't, I don't find this you know, amusing at, at all in any way. So I want to ask you, you know, let's say that PSA was put in the beginning of the skit. I know it's hard to kind of unsee it, but let's say that it was. Do you think that would change anything for you or make it easier to digest as you go into the skit as opposed to being at the end of it? I just think the seriousness of the subject matter, it, it's like a, a blurry line there, um, you know, mixing comedy, with a subject like this. I don't think there's any way that you can do that tastefully as far as this particular subject goes. Um, there was a, a movie, I think, or a series or something that came out on Netflix um, about some little girls who were in a dance group and it was supposed to be kind of like shining a light on 
you know, the same subject. But ironically, it had the little girls in these suggestive clothes, doing suggestive dances. Mm. Is when you actually put the child in it. So going back to your, your other question, I think having the child acting in these in these scenarios is what really makes it bad because these are children, these are minds that are not fully developed and they're taking these things. In. And that's, that's traumatic because they can sense, like the Jane Doe said in the lawsuit, she knew something was off. Um, she alleged that the younger brother left the scene crying. Um, mm. As far as, you know, some other things that I, I read about the parent goes, um, not to keep going back to this, but she, Jane Doe alleges that Tiffany Haddish was a family friend. They, her mother and Tiffany Haddish had grown close for years. Birthdays, Christmases were check-ins. These were her nieces and nephews. That was Auntie Tiff. Um, so, you know, like I said, you don't you 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 only know what you know when you know it. This this was family to them. So can you, you know, Makes how sense. wrong how wrong is it? Makes them a little more comfortable, some would say. Now, of course, speaking of Jane Doe, Jane Doe is pushing for their arrest, saying it is our hope that the LAPD will finally act immediately and arrest both Tiffany Haddish and Avery Spears. Capone, I'll bring it to you. You know, what do you think should should happen this next? You know, we have one of the plaintiffs saying, hey, I want these two arrested. Um, and, you know, of course, people pushing to, to cancel both of them. I'll ask you, Capone, what do you think should happen next? Um, uh, like uh, Pia said, I strongly don't feel that it was no ill intent. As Ashley just said, they were family. And if you felt uncomfortable with family or something that family done, uh, there's a way to erase film. There's a way that the film never should have gotten out. You know, hey, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with this or whatever. None of that was taking place. We're talking 10 years now. Uh, maybe they thought the something would pan out to be the kids being stars or doing other, you know, whatever, whatever they thought process was, but there was a way that they could have canceled the film from being put out. And uh, they didn't, it got out. And now, you know, everybody wants to uh, sue, don't cut their career. And all this, it's always coming after the career when there's somebody who has some substantial amount of money. Not to say <laughs> that Aries is all that red rich, you know, but at the same time, I think it could have been canceled a long time ago, the film itself. Pierre, let me bring that same question to you. We have Jane Doe saying, you know, it's her hope that LAPD will arrest both Tiffany Haddish and Aries Spears. What do you think should happen next? Mm -hmm. My how the love of family changes real quick. And shit. You know, it's all good to give the kid over to him. Now that she can't stand it. It's the worst thing ever happened. All right. Well, I, I hear that. Well, first of all, it was a form of art. Maybe we didn't like art. It, was, it wasn't real life. Ari Spears is not molesting children in real life. And Tiffany Haddish ain't taking kids over to mol you know, molesters' houses. It's not a real life thing. We heard like it's not like a breaking news. It really happened. We really found out this was art. It was bad art. Okay, you didn't like it. It wasn't bad art. It was bad art, but it wasn't real life happening. It wasn't a real life situation that really happened to them. It was bad art that didn't come out right. So arrested and all that, no, bad art. That's all it was, bad art to me. And I saw the video. If you haven't seen the video, don't comment. Watch the video and then comment. Ashley, let me bring that same question to you. You know, what do you think should be the next steps? Of course, we have Jane Doe saying she wants both of them arrested, but what are your thoughts? What do you think should be the next step? Let's just put it out there. This was a little seven-year-old boy in his underwear being touched by a grown man. It, for whatever reason it was for, you know, that's, that's what happened. And that baby felt uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah, I'm, my thing is whatever way the, the law says it should go, that's the way it should go because... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a law for a reason that, that you don't do that type of stuff. And, and Pierre, to your point that, you know, nothing was signed, no contract, you know, none of that happened. So therefore, whatever happens as a result, it just happens because nothing was signed. Y'all didn't 
the parent didn't know allegedly that, you know, these were, this was the skit that was gonna take place. So there's a lot of parties that dropped the ball there. Um, there should have been more concrete policy in place as to what was supposed to happen with that skit. And since there wasn't, it's, it's up in the air. Whatever happens, happens. Absolutely. Now, Pierre, I want to come back to you as we close out, because I think the biggest thing here is that there's a lesson to be learned, right? You know, whether it's for art or not, I think people, as they move forward, I think there's a lot that can be learned here. Um, you know, whether it was from, you know, I think Aerie Spears actually got into the tub with the young boy, of course, of course, there not being any paperwork done, so on and so forth. Pierre, do you think if, you know, nothing is done to Aerie Spears and Tiffany Haddish that, you know, that'll make it easier for people to feel like they can do it again or, you know, that they, there's no lesson that's being taught. Um, do you think, you know, people are just going to be like, hey, you know, well, if nothing happens to them, then, you know, I can continue no. this, if you will. No, no. First of all, look what we're talking about. Look where it's in the news. It's a verbal backlash. Look at the comments. Look at how people feel. You think an artist want to do this again to get the backlash that they're about to hear, Tiffany and so-and-so to say, hey, and then happen to them really like they ain't go to jail, but I'm going to do it. Do you think any artist wants that? It's a different time. Like I said, the cancel culture, it's a different time now than it was 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. So there's things that comics or people don't do today. That skit wasn't made this morning. That skit wasn't made today. It was made 10 years ago when things were different. People act like they don't remember that. It was different back then. Things were just different. Now, was it correct or right? Whatever. It was done back then when the time was different. Today, that skit probably would, would never be done. I don't see that skit being done. Look at the backlash they're never receiving. Why would somebody want to do a skit like that to receive the backlash? So no, I don't see um, if nothing happens to them too. Nothing, something already happened, the backlash. Say, when you say nothing, if they don't go to jail, they don't have to pay no fine. But look what's happened to their career. Look how people are going to start calling them names and Tiffany names and, um, and, and Aries. And stuff. How, how they feel now, how they got to circumvent and move around in this business. That ain't a good feeling, you know, for something they did 10 years ago. Not saying right or wrong, but it's a bad feeling. And I don't think no one wants that heat, that smoke again. Upon, I'll bring that same question to you and go ahead and close out here. You know, <laughs> how do you think this will affect their career? And do you think, you know, there's a lesson that will prevent people from doing this again? I think it will tarnish a little bit, but I think they can overcome it. You know, Tiffany is very, very uh, well, well lawyered up and um, she will, uh, like she said, you know, she will, she never done it. If it, it, especially if it wasn't done in ill, t uh, you know, ill intent. Ill intent. Mm -hmm. um, the funny thing is that, uh, I, you know, I always go to the race car. It's so funny to me that Elvis Presley married his wife when she was 14, going on 15. Jerry Lee Lewis married his cousin at 10 years old. And this mm. shit back then was all right. It wasn't called child molestation then. It was called superstars that had young wives. And uh, now, you know, not trying to say anything is good about what was done about this film, but at the same time, you know, it just seems like so much heat becomes on, you know, then you got the R. Kelly's, you got the Bill Cosby's and some shit was 30 years ago and they still penalizing these brothers or people for doing what they done. And uh, I'm not saying that is right, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I just think that there's a courtesy when it comes down to the other race. Absolutely, now Ashley, I'll ask you that same question. How do you think this will affect their career as we move forward? I'm no comedian. I'm not a celebrity. I've never been in the public eye, so I can't fully speak to it. But from what I've seen, you know, from the outside looking in, people who get canceled, are they ever really canceled? You know, you, you lose a little bit of money, you lose some jobs. Um, but ultimately, you know, a lot of these people still have their core fan bases. They can still walk into these spaces and, and, and be okay. Not to say that the backlash they receive, you know, doesn't affect them. I'm sure it does. But ultimately, you know, you what you did wasn't right. Whether whether your intention was good, whether you know, you you meant it to be this. Um, we, sometimes we have to pay for our ignorance the same way the their mother is, is paying for her ignorance for leaving her kids with with these people, you know. Um, 
all the adults just are going to have to suffer whatever consequence happens here. Now, Pierre, I know you lightly answered this question a little bit, but of course, I want to pose it to you as well, just in mm -hmm. case you want to elaborate. But how do you think this will affect their career moving forward? Well, how it'll affect their careers, it goes, um, I think that they'll get over it, you know, in time, you know, time heals wounds sometimes. This wasn't a real live act. This was more a picture. There's people who like, who done stuff for real, like Jared from, from Subway, his ass is in jail. Like the father from Party from Five, a five. He's, his, his career is over. So yes, you can say, you know, you don't get canceled in your culture, but yes, you will get your behind. Well, Michael, what's the guy from Seinfeld, my, uh, Kramer, his ass is over with. You will get canceled. When shit happens, it goes hard. It goes hard to some people. You know, R. Kelly's mess pretty much tore up now. This is not even a real life situation. This was an art, you know, this was art, you know, to me. It wasn't a good art, but it's art. So I think they'll both get out of this, uh, you know, in due time. Unfortunately, it'll be hanging over their head forever. When, if, when somebody wants to tease them in the comments, you pedophile, you pedophile, well, you know, whatever, you know, it's just the fact that unfortunately, Every Spears jumped off the porch with uh, Lizzo, and this is part of the Lizzo backpack. But I think it is because of what <laughs> Lizzo happened. You know, you mess with Lizzo and her crew and her people. They went digging, looking for something for him, and they found it. Hey, yeah. it is what it is, bro. Just got to realize what you did in the past, because they will come to haunt you if you talk, you know, reckless about somebody who has a big fan base. Man, sure. now... In addition to Tiffany, Had Tiffany Haddish's response, Avery Spears will also respond via his lawyer, Deborah Oprey, who says he isn't going to fall for any shakedown. Now, we haven't heard, as I mentioned, we did hear from Tiffany Haddish, but we haven't heard directly from Avery Spears. So as this continues to unfold, we'll be sure to keep you all updated. Now, to end on a lighter note, because this one is pretty heavy, heavy in a lot of layers, Capone, I'll start with you. What do you have coming up and how can people follow you? Um, being in uh, Arlington, Texas. And I will be in uh, um, October, starting October, I will be uh, doing the Black Enterprise uh, Magazine uh, convention. And uh, they can follow me on Instagram, Instagram Comedian Capone. I say, if you can't spell comedian, please don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, let me come to you. What do you have coming up and how can people follow you? Um, I have October 8th. I'll be in Antioch, uh, California for two shows. Uh, October 22nd in Louisville and back in Atlanta for Halloween party on October 29th. Um, and don't forget the why. I mean, don't forget, you know, I appreciate the support of my podcast, Pierre's Panic Room on YouTube. We dropped a funny one with my man, actor Jackie Long this week. Very, very funny, entertaining. Thank you guys for who watched the show. I really appreciate that y'all support the podcast. And of course, comedy hype, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, again, thank you so much, Ashley, for joining this conversation. Being able to get a different perspective is always helpful and adds value. So thank you for joining us today. If you let everyone know what you have coming up and how can people follow you? Well, thank you for having me. First off, um, I'm just super excited to be a part. This is a fairly new role for me here at Comedy Hype as a staff writer. So I am thoroughly enjoying myself. I thank y'all for having me today. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at the only Ashley J and Twitter at Ash Wants It All. Absolutely. And again, congratulations. I know you're a new mother. So congratulations again on that bundle of joy. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. Now, uh, as well, thank get you. Get ready for it, girl. <laughs> get ready for it, Ashley. You said you ain't in the public eye. You in the public eye now, girl. Get ready for them comments. Get ready for oh, them Lord. comments with your opinion. I'm just letting you know, if you don't want that heat, that smoke, you might want to get out the field. <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> we know, we know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Well, thank you for the advice, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre, for that. Thank you guys for chiming in on this topic. You heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts about Tiffany Haddish and Avery Spears responding to the allegations of sexual child abuse? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. What's up? I'm Terrence Sims. For years, you come to us to get the latest news in comedy and for your favorite comedians. Now, you can come to us for even more news in the world of sports, music, and pop culture. We're bringing you some of our classic shows you love, like Unforgotten, the Comedy Hype News Show, and more one-on-one -on -one interviews. We're more than just laughs, we're the culture, the leader in truth. And well, your streamer got a little more blacker. Welcome to Hype Plus.